Hello, welcome to another video on the channel, it's Wombolody here, World of Tanks console and in this one we're going to take a look at what I believe is the perfect tank to learn this game if you're a relatively new player and that's going to be the VK30.02 um, it's the German tier 6 medium tank, it's the Panther prototype and yeah this tank is just it's absolutely superb so it is. Now my story is that I am back playing World of Tanks after around about a 3 to 4, maybe in a 5 year hiatus. I remember playing this tank way back when I first started playing the game, absolutely loved it, thought it was great, now I'm playing it on my Playstation 5 account and yet it's just delivering game after game on this account as well. Why is this tank so good? Well, it's just the kind of moniker of what you look for in a tank. Now in the real world, in tanks, the kind of what they always say, you want to have a balance of armour, firepower and mobility. And that's kind of why this tank delivers in this game so well as well. I've got three games for you here, which just kind of showcases why this tank is just so good. And if you're just starting out, I would recommend getting this tank and playing a bunch of games in it. Maybe even stop your progress up the tech tree line going towards the Panthers. Probably This is probably a better tank tier for tier than the Panther. In fact, it almost certainly is a better tank tier for tier than the Panther. But you can just learn so much about this game because this tank is just so good to play. Now, it's got a good bit of mobility. It can do 57 kilometers an hour here. I do have an advanced powertrain on it, so I do get a plus 5 boost to my... Uh, top speed and uh, traction. Uh, I'm also playing it with a camo net as well. Now the reason that's probably not the best piece of equipment for this time, but the reason I'm kind of using that is because I just don't have the funds at this point on this account, you know. I'm kind of learning, you know, what it's like to not have millions of credits in the bank or gold or free XP to just kind of uh, do what you want when you buy a brand new tank. So I'm kind of getting that kind of new player experience where I have to uh, just pick sometimes the cheap equipment and when I kind of kitted this tank out I was obviously short of funds and I've put an advanced camouflage on it now it's not a terrible terrible thing to have to be fair uh, and I think we've also got advanced loader so that gets our uh, loading time down to uh, 3.1 seconds but you can actually see the benefit here of the advanced camouflage we kind of managed to stay undetected from that M6 for a long time despite the fact we were pretty close to them and uh, we get the tracking shot in and Thankfully the team is then delivering by uh, delivering hit after hit on that. Very, very dangerous tank. I've been watching some of my live stream recently. We know that the M6 is a very good tank indeed. But yeah, we've uh, got some, some fairly decent camo on this just because of that. It's probably not the ideal piece of equipment, but yeah, it's kind of sometimes, you know, you just play what you can afford at times in this game. We're just running standard uh, consumables as well. And we have uh, 10 premium rounds. And I think in our three games we're going to showcase here, we only actually use uh, one premium round over the course of the three of them. So a light tank has come in, into uh, the full tier. Now, it's a, a, an awkward position for that light tank to be in. Light tanks are very dangerous, so I took the... Uh, Took the initiative there. Now we had kind of been in this part of the map for a period of time, so I knew there wasn't too many of the enemy tanks down here. Now I do use the circle map that does tend to trigger a few people, but it's just what I'm used to. And uh, we I very often check the, the square map by pressing the uh, the touchpad on the, the dual sense controller when we want to get a, a better idea of how the battlefield is going. So here we are juking out now with a P43 bis. And uh, we're kind of held down here, I think. I think he's probably struggling to see too much of our tank. We can't see too much of their tank either. But we imagine to go through the turret of that. I'm not sure. Is that a medium tank? It's a medium tank. I can see it's a medium tank now. So my uh, Churchill 7 friend is going in there. And I was quite confident that Churchill would be able to deliver the, the killing blows to that without my help. So you can see that we are quite a few tanks down now. So we've lost the... Uh, uh, they've lost their artillery, so they've still got, what, that's uh, eight actual tanks. We've got five tanks plus our two artillery. So it's a close battle, this one. Uh, and the majority of their forces are up in the middle of the map. So I wanted to get myself involved up in there on the other flank. Uh, so we've got a good portion of our hit points. And that's another thing that's very good about this tank. It's actually got heavy tank hit points. I think the AIM-6 has only got a thousand hit points. 
Uh, the VK here is a medium, has 955. Uh, putting some rounds into the KB1 here is going to turn our armour towards us. We've got one shot, we've got nine to go. We fire the first round there, we bounce. We fire the second round, we bounce that one as well. I'll track them, and this is where we use one premium round because that was. In fact, we actually fire a third shot into the KV1 before we decide to load a premium round and eventually remove that tank. It's a close battle, so, you know, it wasn't. I don't feel too bad about firing that premium round given that we uh, fired three standard rounds into them without managing to get the pain in. A close game like this. You know, I thought, yeah, let's just get a premium round, remove that tank, and see if we can take out the rest of the enemy. Who have uh, suffered some catastrophic losses in the last minute, and are down to just two tanks remaining. We're up to 1,500 damage, 600 spawn, and just a little tank destroyer left on the enemy team. Blessed with a good team here, folks, to be honest with you. Certainly wouldn't go to say that we did uh, anything that was uh, essential to winning this battle, but we've done a good portion of damage, we took the initiative down on the other flank, we put the pressure on the light tank when it uh, appeared down there, and we come out with a third place in this one, the Churchill 7 doing 2000 damage, 1600 damage for ourselves, 600 spawn, 710 damage blocked, a very nice result for the VK indeed. Moving on to game 2, we're at Fjords now, this is a tier 7 game, and yet, yeah, as I said, you know, this tank, it, it just does well, even in a tier 7 game, it's fine, obviously, once you go up to tier 8, it's, uh, it starts to struggle, you know, because it's got a heavy tank hit points, so it's got a good slug of hit points, this tank, the armour's fairly decent on it, now you certainly wouldn't want to rely on the armour, but it certainly will bounce a good bit of rounds, I think it's got 80mm on the front plate, it's also very well angled as well, uh, good bit of angling on the side there, so it will bounce, it's fair share of rounds, I think it's 90mm on the front of the turret. Now you certainly, as I said, you wouldn't want to rely on the armour, but it will bounce enough shots that uh, it will keep you in the game for a little bit longer than say maybe some of the other mediums for example. But we've got a Cromwell there, uh, which is obviously a little bit faster, but this thing's also got some mobility. But the Cromwell's just not going to bounce anything, whereas the VK will bounce a few shots. And again, I think that's just why it's a very good learning tank. You know, you don't you don't rely on the armor, so you're not really kind of concentrating too much on angling or hoping that your gun, uh, your armor is going to hold up when you're in front of other tanks. But it will just just bounce the odd round. So get ourselves into this position here, hoping to try and catch a couple of tanks crossing this position. But we, we sit here for a wee bit of time, and not very much happens. Now I've got a little Wolverine down there. Is it a Wolverine? Or is that an Achilles? It's something along those lines, I can't quite see. It's an Achilles! So we go take a poke round this corner, six cents goes out, something is looking at us. I'm like, yeah, I don't fancy it sitting there too much longer. Now, uh, the Achilles takes a hit for 400 hit points, so... It sees a couple of tanks there, so I, I, I kind of point this out in my live streams that a lot of players do this. They kind of just... They poke a corner, they lose half their hit points, and then for some reason, they just poke that corner again thinking that there's going to be a different result and that's what the Achilles has done there and he has uh, been removed from this game so it's just I don't know what that player expected to happen there you've just lost 400 hit points by poking that corner the first time you've got no armour whatsoever what did you think was going to happen when you poked that corner again you know so yeah it's just, just something I'd always advise to you if you're a, a relatively new player even a veteran player you know, if you poke a corner and lose half your hit points, then if you poke that corner again, there's a very, very good chance you're going to lose the other half of your hit points. Don't do it. That corner has uh, become an unsafe zone. Go and find somewhere else to, to sort of take the fight to the enemy, because that 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 that, that part of the, the map has been, you know... It's just too dangerous, especially early part of the game. Uh, yeah, so we move up into this corner here now that a lot of enemy tanks in front of us you can see from the map We're up against a, a French tank destroyer, the uh, AMX AC I'm, I'm not so, so great with some of the names of the tanks these days But he's got a weak point on the top that's the, the view refinder or the, the commander's cupola uh, On that line of tanks that tends to be a weak spot on all of them And we're putting some nice accurate shots into uh, the tier 7 French tank destroyer taking a good portion of the hit point. We've got a Dicker Max is that. Again, we're, we're held down here, so we're making the shot difficult for them. They've got no armour whatsoever. They do have to hit our 
turret square on the front if they're going to pen us. does have good pen, that tank destroyer, of course. But, uh, we made our tank as small as possible, uh, whereas we could just hit any part of their tank and take some of their hit points from IS-2 here. That's a difficult one for us now. If you were going to load premium rounds, this is probably where I should have, but we stuck with the standard rounds. Try to get the tracking shot in here on the IS-2. I'm going to struggle to go through the front of that tank, but if it gives us a side, we can definitely make some shots. So I'm going for the tracking shot there, we get the tracking shot, and our teammates are doing the rest. One through the turret as well, so a fast firing gun, as I said, combination. It's got a bit of firepower, that's just not got the hardest hitting gun. Uh, 135 average damage, I think it's got about 150 millimetres of pain, so it's not like amazing, but it's enough to, to sort of contest most, most tanks through the front. And if you can't put them through the front, then you just do the, the tracking shots, or... Uh, I, do, I do my very best not to load premium rounds, because I hate getting hit with premium rounds, so I try not to be a premium spammer. As I said, we've got three games here, and we'll only actually fire one premium shot uh, in all three of them. So this one is pretty much over now. We know this is a win. We've got a T-34-100 there. He put a, a big hefty hit into us, so we're going to try and flank round the, the T-34-100. Uh, but by the time we get there, I think we do get there in time to put one shot into them. But the uh, the battle as a contest is over at this point. Our team cannot lose from this stage. Well, so you think, but this is World of Tanks at the end of the day. I have seen some teams manage to uh, pull off some fairly spectacular losses, that's for sure. So again, just demonstrate, it's not got the best mobility this tank, but it will do 55 kilometers an hour, it turns around quickly enough. So you can kind of, you know, flank around here fairly quickly to, to get a couple of shots on this T-34, who's then going to turn our attention to us. He's going to take a slug of our hit points again, so... Yeah, good gun on that tank, I believe, so the armor not quite holding up there. And we pull back to make sure we survive, because we like to survive uh, the games and... Yeah, you know, build that stat up. I don't know why. I quite like surviving battles. So another good game in the VK. Again, just demonstrating the attributes that this tank has. Perfect balance of firepower, mobility and armour. And that is why it does so well. Particularly against its own tier. But it's also pretty handy against tier 7 tanks as well. So Malinovka. What are we going to do in Malinovka now? Something we've not spoke about in this video is that the first 30 seconds of the battle can be incredibly important, particularly if you're in a fairly mobile tank, this is a tier 6 game again, and you're top tier, and there's a crucial position in Malinovka that if you can take, you will pretty much dominate the map and it's quite hard for your team to lose. Now, it's usually the light tanks that will go for this, but I thought, you know what, we're, we're pretty fast, it's a tier 6 game, let's see if we can get into this dip down here and what we're looking to try and get is to that upslope where we can pretty much spot the entirety of the enemy team. So a light tank has ended up down here as well, it's a little T21 so it is, now we make a bit of a mess there, we were going for the ram, uh, so we, we made a bit of a mess of that but our team is also helping us out here, putting some shots in across the, the field taking their hit points. We've lost a fair bit as well, we've got the other enemy light tank coming in, he's going to, again, I wanted, wanted the ram there on the MT-25, again our, uh, our team definitely helping us out here, we're getting the shots in as well, we're up to nearly 1300 damage, and now we've got the front of our tank, we've got the arty aiming at us as well, this cost us a good bit of our hit points here, but we have taken out the two enemy light tanks, with the help of our team, we've got a capture KV-1 coming around as well, big shout out to this, uh, uh, what is that? A Sherman, an E2, who came there and uh, helped us out, seeing that we are in a little bit of a perilous position and they really did do us a favour by coming and taking the heat off us from that captured KV-1 and I think they have a very good game themselves. I think they die fairly soon, but I think they were actually the top damage dealer by the end of the battle, but we've got the position that we wanted and what you're going to see here is that once you get to this position you can just poke up Spot the enemy team and let your enemy, yeah, sorry, let your uh, let your comrades do all the damage and it's very hard for the enemy team to manoeuvre at this point because you're just spotting pretty much the whole map. We're going to poke up here. As we poke up here, I think we see an enemy AT-15 and that's definitely not something that we want to sit in front of but, you know, we've got them spotted. We spotted another tank destroyer. 
a little bit further down the map. Now what I'm doing here is that I'm waiting till my 6 saves goes off. I want that AT to think I am still going to be there the entire time. And then once we get unspotted we're going to flank around here. So he's going to hopefully still be driving towards where he thinks I am. But because we waited till we were unspotted we're now going to try and sneak around here and try and catch our, or spot the enemies at the back of the map. And uh, yeah, really just close the map down here. What we're doing, what you do when you get into that position, you close the map down for the enemy. You give them no room to manoeuvre uh, anywhere they go. So an open map, this, uh, this map here. So once you open it up, you just uh, make it so hard for them to manoeuvre that it's quite hard for your team to lose from this position. Getting a kill there on the Stook. Uh, double bushing there as well. We're actually firing through two bushes, which we're able to fire at that tank. Uh, undetected, we're going to spot a, I think that's a Chinese medium of some sort up there, so still getting the spots in, that's our fifth spot of the battle, spotting another tank as well, sixth spot of the battle, and as I said, once you get into this position, that dip, we're round here, you're fairly safe as well, that's another great thing about the position, you're, you're relatively safe from the enemy, you can poke up, spot them, and then poke back into a safe place, the arty find it quite difficult to hit you as well, and it's just the, it's a game winning position on this map. So, 1400 damage here, 5 enemy tanks remaining. We're just going to poke up here, so I knew that. Oh, it's an, S, an SU-100, I can't, I can't say, I've got a little tiny pre pre preview screen here folks, so I can't tell what's actually, what tanks I'm looking at from, from where I am. But yeah, you can just rack in the spot and damage up now, taking the full, uh, hit points from that enemy tank destroyer uh, in terms of spotting damage four enemy tanks remaining we're going to go up onto this little crest of the hill we're all going to as i said we've closed the map down so we know they're all just going to be tucked in this little bit of a position here we pop up we spot the kv85 we spot the rt we want to hit on the rt of course don't we because we don't like rt and again just the, 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 we're just racking the spotting damage up here you can just see the ribbons that's nearly up to 1500 spot damage, still getting some damaging shots in ourselves. We've got a little, oh we see the arty, we want the arty of course, we want the arty, do we get the kill on the arty? Yes we do, that's a fine way to finish this battle and yeah, it's just this tank in a nutshell, you know as I said it's a great learning tank, if you are relatively new to the game, eh, I definitely suggest working your way up to the VK. And it's, uh, it's got good progression as well, it can take you up onto the Panther, it can take you onto the Tiger too, so it uh, opens up some good uh, good lines. But yeah, I'd definitely suggest maybe just, you know, once you get this tank unlocked, play a good number of games in it. Perfect balance of firepower, mobility and armour, and you will learn so much about this game and uh, how to be better once you start to get to the higher tiers if you give this tank a chance. But thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye now.